Okay, so this is should be the final day on uh, the set of Sukkim. Uh, so we have Mishlei 23, 26 through 28. I should change this here. Uh, Pay attention, my son, to me, and let your eyes watch, guard, or keep my ways. For a harlot is a deep pit, and a stranger woman is a narrow well. We're going off of the interpretation that Nahria is any woman who's also to you, even if she's not a professional harlot. And we're also assuming that Zona is a professional harlot. And then the new passage was Af hi kechetef te'ero vognim ba'adam tosif. She too lurks in ambush. Uh, okay, well, all right. The way we originally translated it based on the Mitzvah Sion, I think, was she lurks. So Af hi, she too, kechetef, like a snatcher, like a quick snap is someone who snatches quickly. I guess snatch is you can't snatch slowly, right? <laughs> so I guess you don't have to say quickly snatch to snatch. Uh, Taro, she looks at ambush. Ubogdim bottom tosi and traders among men she will add or increase. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the questions except just the new ones. Uh, our new questions were. Um, hmm. We mixed them in. So. Right, I did, but is this the? I think this is not the right file. I, there, there, there was that snafu yesterday with the uh, the namings, which I, I meant to go back and change afterwards. Let me just see if I can find it. Um, I forgot where I put these things. I just saved them. To, oh no, that's not there. Yeah. Uh, I think these ended up getting saved in a weird spot. Nope, not there. They ended up getting saved in 2020. Yeah, that's where all of them are. 23. That's the one. Okay. So this is this is the one. Uh, okay, fine. So uh, yeah, so we said, uh, what does kechetef terov kechetef terov add? Is it a new consequence or is it an explanation of chavzain? What's the difference? Uh, and uh, what, did, okay, and then um, we said, who is the he in Chavches? Is it uh, just the, oh, I, I listed them out. Is it the Zona and the Nahria, or does it indicate that the two are interchangeable, or is it just referring to the Nahria? Um, who, what are Bogdim in this context, and what does it mean, Tosif Bogdim Ba'adam? What is this adding? Why is this necessary to mention to the sun that it's adding Bogdim? How is this related to Kachat of Terov? Why express this in terms of adding? 13, why does it need to say Af? Is it coming to refute the Havamina that she is not in the category of these consequences in Chavzayin? Or is it coming to just an added additional point independently? And then uh, when does this snatching happen? Is this in the initial seizure that when she, she gets him? Or is it describing like in the process, like in the pit? So to speak, then it's uh, she's like a chatef um, terov. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we did. Let's see. I'm getting. I think I'm getting mixed up between Rubin and Yona and any approaches we took. Anyone remember any approaches that we uh, that we took? I mean, we had the idea of the suddenness, right? That it comes without without warning. I think we were saying that the married woman. Um, what's it? Um, was this the Rubin and Yona? Well, Rina said any woman was like a wife. Right. I think we said something that was the, the married woman. Kind of Did we? I don't recall. Um, so let's review the Rubin and Yona then. So Rubin. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, 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 if you stumble with a married woman, yeah. then, um, then now there's someone who's like, Going to be actively trapping you. It's not. It's no longer just right. Being right, as opposed to the zona who doesn't actively yeah. necessarily trap you. Yeah, right. You know, if you say if you decide to say no, she's not going to. She doesn't have anything over you. Yeah. You right. Know, uh, other than your desire. Right. You know, okay. Yeah. All right. That's that's true. And then you had something uh, <laughs> that was from the same. Okay. All right. Um, Plus one. Yeah. Um, okay, so then we had the Rabin Yona, who uh, in 26 and 27 said that this was a, um, uh, that this is uh, not really as any woman who's not uh, motor to you. And then he warned about the gradual um, uh, 
uh, uh, what was the other thing? Since you're Ragil with her, since you're familiar with her, then you're going to look at her a lot and you're going to be drawn after her and then you're going to get the Ruach Znunim and then you're going to go from Sicha to Mare, from Mare to Hirhor, from Hirhor to Maga and then you're going to fall into the pit. Okay, but then the new point was even this uh, this stranger woman, even though she's not evil, like the Zona is, so he learned Kechetev is like a wild animal. Um, he does not know about her until she uh, kills him instantly, uh, suddenly. He doesn't think he's going to stumble with her because she's not a Zona. I feel like there's an idea we need to get out of that. And then upitam the peta yikashal kechetev is kechayas chataf like a snatching animal. Ubogdim bottom tosif and then there's another new point we need, which we need to develop. The ish asher who yashar betivo the guy who is a yashar in his nature which means he's drawn to the truth and to righteousness uh, by nature. Uh, not doesn't mean naturally by nature. It means that he's cultivated his nature in a way that is drawn to those things. Yehafech bogid ba'avura he will transform into a bogid because of her. Kiyitzer ha'isha tigaber al toledas ha'yosher asher bo the Again, I think this means the Yitzer for the woman, not the Yitzer of the woman, uh, will uh, overpower his Yosher nature that is in him. So I think those are the two. Uh, so the two Havaminas, according to Rabbi Yona, are she's not a Zona. How bad can it be? Answer is bad. <laughs> and then the second Havamina is I'm a Yashar, right? I can't become a Bogade. Kamash Malan, wrong. Mashallah. Yeah. Um, so the question is, how, how does that, uh, how does that transformation take place? And then what, what exactly is the Havami Maskana? Yeah. I think the, I, I just want to make an observation on the last one, uh, because I was thinking about it because I just recorded a Stoju podcast about it this morning, <laughs> um, that, uh, and I feel like, uh, let's see, where is this? This is also in atomic habits. I feel like this is also in the culture code. Uh, that a lot of your behavior is not determined by, um, sorry, I'll put it in the positive. A lot of your behavior is dictated by identity, right? So if you identify yourself as a, as a Yashar or a Yoshar, uh, it's, it's unclear to me which one is which, then that will, um, that will promote that type of behavior. But there's also a pitfall attached, which is that if you identify as a Yashar, you could start doing non-Yashar actions and not realize it because you define yourself as Yashar. I think the, the clearest place we've expressed that in the last two and a half years is in the first puzzle in Tehillim, uh, which I'll just review really quickly. Um, and I'm not going to look into the Meiri, but I think this was the Meiri, one of the Meiri's two approaches. Uh, the first puzzle in Tehillim says so it says happy or praiseworthy is the man who does not follow the counsel of the rishaim which meiri learns here is not wicked people it's people who are like um uh what do you call it uh actually sorry, i'm mixing up too many ones whatever rishayim here does not mean the really bad guys miri learns it in ascending order okay so rishayim are the least bad of the three and he doesn't stand uh on the way of sinners okay so that's worse low and then uh he does not sit in the session of scorners and he learns that that's the worst of all so so the i think it's a Hazal he was quoting who says well if you're not standing uh, if you're not following the counsel of the wicked, how would you ever come to stand on the path of sinners? And if you're not standing on the path of sinners, how are you ever going to come to the sit in the session of scorners? So the way we explain it, according to the Meiri, is you don't identify as a Russia. And because you don't identify as the Russia, you tell yourself, I can mingle with these people and not, uh, not partake of their actions. But what happens is the interaction with the Russia breeds identification. And you start to identify with him. And the identification with him removes certain barriers, psychological barriers to doing certain actions. And before you know it, you are one of the Rashaim. But then you tell yourself, oh, well, but I'm not one of those Khatayim, right? But then, but because you've gone to the Russia camp, you're now closer to the Khatayim. And then the same phenomenon happens there. And then the same thing repeats itself with the, with the lates. So this is, so identity is a double-edged sword is that it can help you in your behavior, but it could also blind, cause you to be blindsided. So that's why I think what's happening to this guy here is that he's a Yashar, and he says, well, I'm a Yashar, 
I can uh, I can guard myself against Isha uh, Nafria. Um, and uh, and the answer is that no, she can transform you. The not she, the Yitzer in you that she awakens can transform you um, uh, from that into a, into a bogate. And the um, there's a statement. This is not. I don't know if this is exactly how it was all applied, but there's in Apostrophus Arios, which basically practically speaking means that no one can really be trusted to guard themselves against Arayos. And that's why the, um, this is the, the most extreme example of this uh, is um, uh, about how like even, w- even with Arayos, what was that? What's that? Uh, custodian, I think is the literal. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like you can't have someone be like on, on, on watch for uh, with regards to Arayos for themselves. Yeah. Um, uh, there is, uh, I think the most extreme form of this about how you, how, how, uh, what do you call it? How sneaky this, uh, Yitzir is, is at the end of Hilgos Isuri Bia, I believe when he, Ram was talking about, so he's talking about Yichud and then he is, ends up talking about just the Arayos in general. And he says, hold on. Actually, I'm going to. For the Muhammad, right? I've said this before. The only downside, not the only downside, one of the only downsides of uh Al Torah that is an upside for Muhammad Mamre is you can go Muhammad Mamre, go to an entire section, and then choose display the entire thing and then do control F to find uh uh BT. There we go. Yeah, so um nope. Nope, nope, that's the one. Yeah, so uh, he says basically, uh, let's see, oh, here's, this is seven, uh, no, 18. Yeah, so Ram at the end, this is be 2218. There's nothing in the Torah that's more difficult for the majority of people than to separate from Arayos and Bios Asuros. You notice from this year last night, is Arayos and Bios Asuros, because those are not the synonyms, right? Arayos is. Uh, Isuri Bia, the Rahai of Karis in Parkinson's Aharemos, and then Isuri Bia are other ones. Amru Chachamim Bashash needs Tavu Yisrael Al Harayos, Bahu. When the Jews were commanded about Arayos, they cried. The Kibbalu Mitzvah Zobat Aromas Ulavachia, and they accepted this mitzvah with um, complaints and crying. Shnemar Bocha Lemish Bachosav, as it says, they cried for their families. Iske Mish and the Drasha is uh, in, in familial matters. Okay. The Amru Chachamim Gezov Arayos Nafshash Adam Mis Avelahim Umachamadatan. Chachamim said that. Robbery and uh, arayos, a person's soul desires them and like um, uh, covets them. Here again, I think it's not gezel; it's all stealing. Here, arayos means all sexual uh, uh, prohibitions. The inatamotiv kahal b'cholzman uzmanish ein ba prutzin ba arayos of abios and service. You will not find any congregation that doesn't contain people who are licentious in arayos and bios and service. Amru Chachamim, I think I read too far back, but whatever. These are good. Amru Chachamim rov b'gezel umiv ba arayos v'akol ba vak lashanhara. Chacham said, majority people are over on Gezel, a minority on Arayos, and everyone is over on Avag Lashanara. Okay, this is the part I wanted to get to. Lafika, therefore, Roilol Anam Lakov Yitra Badavarze. It's um, uh, appropriate for a person to um, subdue his Yitzir in this matter. Ulahargil Atma Bukdusha Yitzir of Makshav Dehora Ubdas Nafona Kedeli Nasanahan. And to accustom himself with excess Kedusha and pure Makshava and uh, and a firm das to escape from these things. The Zaharim in a Yichud, and you should be careful about Yichud, Shehu HaGorim HaGadol. That is the greatest cause of falling to the Zisurim. And this is the line I want to pull out. Gedolei HaChachamim Hayu Omrim L'Tamidehen, the greatest Chachamim would say to their students, He Zaharu Bi Mipnei BT, which my understanding of that means, like, like, um, uh, he's basically saying, like, like, um, uh, oh, hold on. He's a Ruby, Mipne BT. It's, it's like, don't, don't like leave me alone. With yeah, daughter. don't, right. Yeah, don't leave me alone with my, my daughter. He's a Ruby, Mipne Kalsi. Uh, don't leave me alone with my daughter in law. Today, why? Okay, because the assumption here is like, what guy would, would be tempted by his daughter, right? But the answer is, to teach the students to not be ashamed of this, and to distance themselves from Yichud. So in other words, there you, you have to be on the lookout and suspect yourself of being tempted by things that you wouldn't tell yourself they'd be tempted by, you know? Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the, um, uh, the what, what, what led me there? Oh yeah, from the uh, Yasher thing. That, so that's the trap. The Yasher says, oh, I am someone who's not tempted by these things. No, 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 no one is an, 
am someone who is not tempted by these things. Anyone, this could be awakened in any case. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, when we were learning the Sleepy of Peacehood in the Rupert Yeah. There's a story, um, it was Amora, I don't remember which Amora, he saw a woman's face in the window um, and like he, like, he, like, like the like the desire like seized him and he like li like lifted this like extremely heavy ladder or be able to like get to her yeah and he like he like barely was able to stop him so right it was like you know, yeah yeah right yeah there's a genre of stories like that oh i'm gonna stop the recording to say one other thing hold on um Okay, so that takes care of the Havamina of I'm a Yashar that's not going to harm me. What about this thing? Uh, oh, so it actually works out well, right? Both of them are identity. She's not a Zona. She's not a danger. I'm a Yashar. I'm not going to succumb. Kamash Balan, Bam Bam, both could be, you know, uh, both can succumb, right? Is that even though she's not a Zona, then she can get involved in this. And then even though you're a Yashar, then you can get involved in this. Coach Kane, if you're not a Yashar and if she is a Zona. Yeah. 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 I was talking to someone the other day where, um, like, it seems like, like this is like like a perfect case to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, so he was saying that um, he he you know, he, he works with with non Jewish people, um, and the this non Jewish woman um, was flirting with him, um, and like, um, like she was like. Like, like, hey, look at my thigh. Like, this has like really goosebumps. <laughs> uh -huh. like goosebumps. Uh -huh. and, like, right. Um, and like, like, he, you know, he told her that he wasn't, you know, he like he wasn't like interested. He wasn't. He wasn't gonna right. do anything. Um, and like, she was like, she she was maybe like more interested in him because he he wasn't like like actively pursuing her because i think because you think she like playing hard to get as they yeah, call it yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what she, how she framed it yeah 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 and um well i i think she wasn't like oh he's playing hard to get yeah but um like but like she was like oh I, I, I feel like i can become friends with you because you know more because like because you're not like 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 um like you know, trying to like get with me or something, right. something like that. Yeah. And um that's like, yeah, I feel like that's exactly the type of situation where then, you know, if they're friendly and then and he knows that she's interested in him, then right. like if like a moment of like weakness gets him, then like like he knows that she's available and then like, you know, um that's like the type of thing where like it totally like, you know. Right. Um, that just reminds me of another point we made yesterday that I just want to repeat here is the um, in that chain of from looking to uh, to fantasizing to you know that whole chain is you don't know at what point the drop is going to be and that's the idea of the sudden the sudden thing uh, and then I just want to add one more thing also off the recording hold on um, okay so now we get to our Jennifer today which is the Derek Nister right so as just to restate this. The whole Mishle is about the Isha Nahria and the Zona and the the other term he uses, um, Isha Zara, right? And uh, that the silver casing level is what we were just talking about, which is the actual woman. The gold apples muscle is um, is uh, the Derek Nister is uh, Minus, is heresy, right? And that's Los Asur Akhil Babachim Zominus, Akhil Nechim Zosnus. So the person who, so remember, uh, I don't know if Chaim can hear or whatever, but um, uh, we were looking for Rashi on this and we were surprised that Rashi didn't say this. Turns out Rashi does say this, but he only says it on our Pasuk. Um, oh, why am I going to Rashi there? I have Rashi on the thing. Uh, Rashi here says, Kachetef is pitom, ubogdim badim tosi, marbe bi Yisrael bogdim. So she increases bogdim in Israel. Al hakadosh baruchu al mitzvos because of the So it doesn't say exactly say minos, minos, but he does say it's about God and mitzvos. Sorry, maybe that's not the Rashi. Maybe Rashi is not taking that approach. Mitzvos David though does. Let's look at Mitzvos David. Okay, uh, on twenty six. Even though we've read it, but uh, actually this is start twenty seven. Twenty seven. All right. Kishucha rotolomar ki bim. Be Imre Amarai Tavin, 
uh, you should understand my words. Shazona hu kabor amo. That a zona is like a deep pit. Shakashma o lalos mimena. That is difficult to ascend from. Kichin kasha lihipara min hazona. Uh, so too, it's difficult to separate from Mazona Achar Shal Ba. So again, on the Nigla way, it means once you start going to Azona, it's an addiction and it's hard to get to get rid of. Okay, Benemar Lamashal Minos. Okay, but this is said by way of allegory for heresy. So that's what we have to figure out. What is the Zona in the Mashal? Okay, then Nachria Zona Nachria. So he learns it's the same woman. Okay. Um, Asher Lo Mi Benos Yisrael Hena. Oh, and he learns Nachria is non-Jewish. Right, so we're talking about Minos, so this is talking about like non-Jewish uh, ideas. He kabe'er tsara uduhuka. She is like a narrow uh, well and like, uh, you know, that, that is dachuk, right? It's like a uh, narrow, confined space. You can't maneuver when you're in it. To, to make yourself wise enough to get out of it, right? So again, uh, you know, he's deliberately using ambiguous language for this, that that in the nimsh, it's in the mashal, it's you can't find a strategy to get out. Um, and I guess there's a muscle and a muscle and a nimshal, right? In the pit, you can't figure out how to get out. In, with the zona, the literal zona, you can't strategize your way out. But then with the, the minus, you can't chachma your way out, okay? Um, there's, no, there's no maneuvering grounds, okay? And then last one, af ki, im ki ena mi Israel, even though she's not one of the daughters of Israel, the ena ragila kolkach ima Yehudim, and she's not so used to being with, uh, with Jews, Pass that if you like. Oops, sorry. Um, she's not so accustomed to being with Jews. Nevertheless, when she is able to snatch one of them, then she will be an ambush on him. Uh, the so I think that what I think what it means is when she sees that she's able to snatch the guy. So notice she's not on the lookout for Jews, but when she sees a Jew that she's like, oh, that guy I can I can get, then she'll she'll ambush to, to snatch him. Ah is terrible. pituyeha, and through her 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 seduction, holeches umusefes bodim bivne adam. She will go and increase the number of bodim in in, in bivne adam. And I think this is where Isaac's thing of the plus one, like she's trying to add the count uh, to the bodim, and that makes sense here because if you're talking about a relationship, you know, just a uh, in the in the realm of the sexual. It doesn't make sense to say that you're adding a count to bodim. Like that's not a thing. But if you're talking about Jews who are loyal to Torah in their beliefs, and then Jews who are seduced to the dark side, then the plus one does make sense. Yeah, Chazio. Good question. What's the one? What's Bogdim? Bogdim Bogdim literally means a traitor, but it is a very difficult term. It does not mean traitor like um, Benedict Arnold, like in uh, the Jewish sense. It's like a like a. Like a... No, um, so in Mishlei, all we've seen so far is it's it, okay. That's what we have to figure out. Okay. Yeah. Second question. Yeah. Why is it? Why is it necessarily that she's not actually like specifically looking for a guy like this or going out of her way, but only if he happens to already be? So uh, according to, so I, first of all, we, we don't have to learn it that way, but the way that I think the reason the Matsuda's W is learning it that way is right, because right. is because she is among the, the, the it, it, you know, the muscle is it's a non-Jewish woman. Non-Jewish women typically are not, again, in society where there are not assimilated Jews, non-Jewish women were typically not going into the Jewish community trying to find men to be with. Right. So that's like, that's the, in the mushal. And then in the nimshal, I think also like, you know, Christianity is a proselytizing religion, right? Uh -huh. Philosophy is not a proselytizing thing. Philo like, like, you know, um, uh, in terms of, well, I guess it depends on what kind of philosophy, but I'm right. saying like in general, you know, philosophy is not an, uh, or I shouldn't say philosophy, minus heresy is not intrinsically a proselytizing endeavor. It doesn't seek out people to try to convert them, you know? Um, so that, I think that's why um, why he's saying that she's not gonna target him. Okay. Umus of Lamala, and it's referring to above, Lomar to the 26, Kasher Tavin Kolze Aide Im Amarai, when you understand all of this based on my statements, Yadati Sheinecha Durachai Titsorna, Lotikashalba, then you should understand that your ways should uh your eyes should guard my ways and you will not stumble on this okay so the question now is how do we take this idea that we just developed about the uh literal zona in Nahria and then apply it to minus and i think to me the the line that jumped out the most was the narrow well that you cannot be mishafeh bo mitzad outside you can't maneuver in a way that will he's talking lawless that will allow you to get out yeah 
I think there's a type of well, intellectual pitfall where you start thinking in a certain way. Yeah. And then you it's extremely hard to think your way out of the perspective that you're looking at things. Okay. Right. So the question is why. Right. I think you're I think you're right. I think that's the muscle. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. So similar to how we were talking about, right? Um, I guess maybe even going back to Rubini and Yona. Yeah. Right, where you think that you have clear conceptions of things and that your desires then are going to just naturally be in line with those things yeah. and that once you reach that stage so then the desires are not going to pull you in other directions yeah right and the reality is that we have natural inclinations to uh, want to reject okay, ourselves good. from gods and yeah. it feeds a certain purely emotional desire okay, and if right. you feed this thing and you think I'm not going to fall into this trap or it's not yeah. going to become weakened within me. Yeah. It's going to constrict you. And then once you habituate yourself and you feed your desires in this way to like see yourself in a grandiose way and to relate to others in the world uh, in a more self-serving way, yeah. then that's going to become very hard of a okay. reality. So I, I like your idea, but I think that's more in line with the shot that we've been doing, which is that just as in Arios, there is a very powerful sexual drive in a person that will cause them to take these steps without realizing it and, and wants to succumb. So too, in regards to Minus, there is, there are, uh, there's a part of us, a very strong part of us um, that wants the Torah to not be true, that once God does not exist, that wants there to not be Hajj that wants there to not be Scarva Onesh, you know, all these things. And you fancy yourself someone who's just engaged in this on an intellectual level um, uh, and uh, and is objective. But really, these desires are operating under the surface and could be subtly affecting your thinking in a way where, where you know, it, I think the, uh, the, the good muscle is like, I don't exactly know how sinkholes work, but I do know that you don't spot them until they actually like cave in. Like the whole underneath is being eroded, you know, and on the surface it looks fine and then boom. So similarly, you are fueling the desires for believing the Minos under the surface while consciously I'm just thinking through ideas, you know, and then, uh, and then boom, that's the, that's the danger. Yeah. I think it's noting also that sentence and, and that you're not seeing coming that there is a fine line between like a very fine line between what's like good proper ideas and then what's new ideas and a lot of times you're it's, not a, it's a minute clear. difference yeah yeah <laughs> and a lot of times it's just not clear as you're going along there which one it's going to be until yeah until right you know, yeah yeah that, that, that is definitely true so uh, i'm regarding now what you're saying so i think what isaac is saying um now fits in in terms of the the pit which is what you were answering is you can't maneuver so why is that is I think I'm going to read this thing from, uh, again, I highly recommend this book. It's a philosophy book. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is Adler's uh, 10 Philosophical Mistakes. Again, the whole idea of the book is saying that there were 10 mistakes made about 10 subjects in philosophy um, that were made from the 17th century and on. And the mistakes were made due to thinkers not being, uh, and we're talking like Descartes, Hume, Berkeley, like, you know, um, Kant, all those, all those, those guys. Um, that gang, that they were not sufficiently uh, familiar with the ideas in the ancient texts in like in, in Socrates, Plato and Aristotle and others. And therefore they made certain small mistakes, which then spawned all of their philosophies. And if you go back and you correct those small mistakes, then you can avoid those pitfalls. And so he has this really good preface called Little Errors in the Beginning. And uh, I just want to read one little excerpt from this. He says that, um, uh, da, da, da. hold on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's right in the very beginning. Uh, so Aristotle wrote, the least initial deviation from the truth is multiplied later a thousandfold. Okay, that was the line. Um, and, uh, and, you know, if you want to use the modern analogy, if you have a laser pointer, you know, and you move it just a millimeter here, then on the wall, it's going to move like several feet, you know? So the problem I think is that if you get, you know, Minus is built on certain premises. And if you get the premise in your head, the nature of a Yesod or a premise is it affects the way that you learn all the things that are built upon that premise. So that's why in this Yeshiva, then the Derech of 
of teaching Hashkafa from Rebbe is to focus on the Ikarim. Okay, and by Ikarim, I don't necessarily just mean the Ramos 13 Ikarim, like Rav you know, has given cheer on the Sefer Ikarim for many years, you know, and, and you know, Chavos Kuzri, you know, Kreskas, right? <laughs> you know, like there's, the, the point is to focus on Ikarim because if those aren't sufficiently clear and if you're not sufficiently connecting everything that you learn like looking at them in light of the Ikarim, it's easy to make one of these like small errors in the beginning. And then what happens is you end up thinking your way into a corner and because you've embraced another Iker uh, that you don't realize, then like the, you don't realize, in other words, you don't realize you're thinking only on the basis of certain premises. And the real insidious thing is sometimes the premise can get into your mind and, uh, and, can become it can become internalized in a way where where you literally can't think uh, outside of the premise anymore. And I'll give you an example. I think the big so in in other eras of Jewish history, the pitfall was philosophy because of its tie to a certain culture. You know, let's say like Hellenism or whatever. You know, a certain lifestyle. In other areas, uh, times and places, it was religion. It was certain religious ideas. Okay, I think one of the big pitfalls here uh, nowadays is in epistemology. Right is in how we, you know, the premises about how the mind works and how we gain knowledge from reality. And the first of the 10 philosophical mistakes here, which I gave a shear on in 2021, I think, where we read through this, was um, is consciousness and its objects. And basically what Adler talks about there is um, that it was only, so let's say, you know, the famous Descartes experiment of like, if I doubt everything, then what could what what is left that I can't doubt, and then that would be the basis of my philosophy. So that's where I think, therefore, I am. Uh, you know, came about because you can't doubt the fact that you're thinking. So I'm not going to spoil the chapter of Adler, but what he's saying is that that first step of saying I'm not going to accept anything unless I can prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. That was a move that was not made before Descartes. And once you get that Cartesian standard of 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 thinking into your head that the only truths I'll accept are things that cannot be doubted. So then if that becomes your standard, so then it warps all thinking that you have after that, because then you feel the need, for example, before Descartes, then people did not feel the need to prove the existence of reality because reality is something that we directly uh, apprehend, you know, but then when Descartes came along and I don't even, you know, I, I don't know to, to what extent he talks about in these terms, but then you have these people who feel the need to prove reality or they need to disprove solipsism you know the belief that like the only thing that exists is me and my brain and like everything else is just generated and get into these ways of thinking where once you've internalized that premise you can't get it out of your head you know and i think that's the muscle he's saying of like once you get into the pit there's no way to maneuver and he's talking lawless man yeah there's a sense of the mistake is uh is doing what descartes did or is that a thinking that what descartes was doing was about was no, so right. the, the mistake was just using it as a temporary experiment. So I actually don't know enough about Descartes to know how oh. what 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 he was doing when he did the experiment. But the mistake I'm saying to warn against is that you could very easily imbibe that way of uh, that that epistemological framework and then uh, and and then not realize it. And then if it takes root, you can't stop. Uh, you know, you can't get your mind out of it. Right. Um, it's almost. Uh, <laughs> it's almost like a reverse of the Ava Hashem in uh, Hilpas Tshuva, uh, just like he can't take his mind off that woman. Uh, that's the muscle for Ava Hashem. You can't take your mind off this this woman, right? The I mean, I, I, it's not an accidental thing. That's why Zimmer Shirim are about. Um, another, just one more example here, also, and this one I think is more accessible here is um, let's say moral values. There's another chapter in this book about you know the uh, belief that Tov and Ra are entirely subjective phenomena. That there's no objective good and bad. So that's another thing. And this one's attached to the desires in the flo- in, in the society where like, you know, people feel that good and bad is just matters of taste and like there's no objective reality. It's a very seductive way of thinking. And once you get it into your head, it's very hard to just to get out of the, the thing. Is, well, you believe that this is wrong, you know, and that's your values because of how you were raised in your conditioning and your culture, you know, and that's, uh, you know. I, I got to also recommend a TTL share. And this one I feel like does not get recommended as much as it should. I don't know if it's on the fundamental list. Um, well, first of all, you know, I should say for those who don't know, and I didn't know this until like it was posted in TTL, the whole TTL from uh, 1971 to 2002 is online for free now. 
Okay. Um, also on this website, you can download it. Yeah, which is much, yeah, much better than the other one. So Torah Umada, Torah and Mada, D42. Okay. So one would think maybe from like, you know, hearing, hearing from our yeshiva or whatever that, that like, oh, of course, Rebbe is very pro like learning secular studies, you know, listen to Torah Umada to get like a reality check for the danger of learning secular subjects. And the example he uses is to me, I think one of the best examples for him to use, which is studying history. Okay, that studying history can completely mess you up, you know, and not even in the ways that it messes us up now. Because I think, I don't know when he recorded that, but like there's certain like historical ways of thinking that weren't even like, uh, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the just a, a teaser for it is that, He's saying, you know, what is, what, what, how do you define the subject of history? Things that happened in the past. Yeah, the study of things that happened in the past, right? Okay, so, so then I think the example we gave is he said, oh, so, you know, on, you know, June 7th, uh, you know, in the year, uh, you know, 150 BCE, then uh, a, 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 a man crossed the street. So is that history? No, obviously it's not. We don't study that in history. So, so, so in history, we study Right. The, that, that's not what we that is factually not what we study. Right. Fact, it's not, so it's not all it's not all things that happened in the past. Yeah, it's so. important things that happened in the past. Ah, so once you're in the realm of important things, important is a value judgment. OK. And not only that, but things that happened. Things don't just happen in physics. Things happen, arguably. I mean, you know, but in history, like what counts as an event? Right. Again, it's through a value system. So what happens is is if you are learning history, you can easily just get into thinking about things in terms of certain values and value systems without realizing it. You know, now that's not the only pitfall in learning history. There's a lot of pitfalls now, especially when he, I don't even, I haven't listened to this in a while. I don't even think he was addressing the history of Judaism or the history of religion. That's even greater pitfalls. But the point is, is, is still the same, which is that you can get these premises in your head without realizing it. And before you know it, you've ended up confining yourself to this um, narrow well of thinking where you you can only think based on those premises that you have involuntarily accepted. Yeah, Isaac? Yeah, I was thinking about like the, the when people talk about my truth or your truth. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hate that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> once you are thinking, well, once you're talking about, once you're qualifying truth by people, yeah. Then it's, you know, as, as, like, as opposed to saying that there is, as opposed to talking about truth as, an objective thing such that it can't be that it can't be qualified. Right. You know, yeah. You know, then um it's extremely hard to take a step back from that because if you try to try to inspect that, then you're, yes. you're seeing it through the lens of this is my truth. Right. You know. Correct. Now I just I feel like I would be intellectually remiss uh, as a teacher if I didn't also say that of course it's not so simple, right? That you have in Pyogravus, Dama Shatashi Vlapikoras, you should know what to respond to an Apikoras. And they say that uh, the Gemara in Sanhedrin says that specifically an Apikoras who's not Jewish, okay? Because uh, with Jews, there's no hope. Yeah, that's what the Gemara says. Uh, that they're just gonna, if you respond to him, you're just gonna make him more of an Apikoras, but you have to like look into that. Um, so specifically for a non-Jew, and and then there's, you know, by the non-Jew. Yeah, yeah, with a Jew, then responding to his Apicorus is just going to make him more of an Apicorus. He's, he's already. He's, he's There's a whole sugi about this, right? Okay, but I'm, I'm just saying. And then clearly, you know, obviously, clearly the Rambam, you know, learned secular philosophy. Clearly the, you know, the, uh, the, the Meiri, the, you know, like there, we have great figures who learn secular. What was that? Uh, the Ramban, yes and no, he, right? He quotes. Oh, right, right. He does it to no Mashtash with Apigoras, but he holds that Aristotle is evil, you know, like actually evil. Um, uh, because he held that Aristotle rejected Torah Mycenae knowingly, like you know, um, and so, but whatever. And then there's different, it's not so simple, right? So, uh, I, I, you know, and the other reality is, you know, and, and again, I, I wrote about this in my, um, okay, in, in, in <laughs> Okay, the, 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 without going into this too in depth, the big threat now is not just in epistemology, but specifically postmodernism. Postmodernism is, in my opinion, the biggest threat to, uh, like in terms of, that's the minus of our generation. And so I read that book uh, by Shadal, and, uh, and where he like, you know, tackles a bunch of these issues. And I am in doubt as to whether like, you know, at a certain point you could have kept people away from postmodernism, but now, like has that ship sailed and maybe the only way to adequately defend yourself from it is to learn it 
uh, I'll buy it in a responsible way. So you know what it is. So you can be on guard against it. In other words, there's, there's the person who is so naive, for example, that he will not notice that this woman is a Zona, right at all. And then think that she's a nice Jewish girl. And then, you know, and then, and then get, get uh, caught in that pit. It's like, you, you can't be on that side of the spectrum either. So it's very, very, it's not easy, but the only thing is to get, learn like one idea at a time and like be aware of like the nature of the pitfalls and then like, you know, add your arsenal. But uh, again, Rabbi Zimmer Shirim on Mishle one through nine, even though I haven't heard all of them, that's really where he deals with this in depth because he holds that that's really what Mishle is, the essence of Mishle is. And, and he, uh, he, he develops that over the course of many Shirim. Okay, right, so let's stop here. I think this is a good, good exercise. Yeah. Does Rabbi also talk about uh, the history thing in Torah it's possible he does. There's different versions of Torah, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be. I can't, can't remember. Where was that? The 